Welcome, Achievers, to another intimate episode of the Easy Achievers Game Podcast. How are you? Hope you're doing well. I find myself, find myself as we're getting closer, first off, to the end of the year. Second, I don't want to bother too many people, if, especially as people are getting busy, going on holiday. And also, there's just not that much going on. It's the end of the year. Uh, less and less news comes out. The only reason a lot of people are having news is... A couple of smaller things happening, and then two, the Activision Blizzard ongoing thing. So, I think everyone's kind of feeling that. It's getting a little more mellow as well, which I kind of like. Everyone's kind of calming for December, of course, Christmas for all the American listeners and Western as a whole. I hope this finds you well that you're listening on either the YouTube or podcast service of your choice. Remember, if you're on anything, remember five-star review on a podcast service, like, comment, subscribe. You know what you're doing. But I thank you for however you support the show. You either watch, comment, subscribing, anything. All of it's worth it. And I thank you. Now, I want to start the show. Again, it's more intimate, so much more back and forth. I do enjoy when someone takes time to comment, questions, comments, or just want to talk about something, like your day or anything like that. Especially on the more intimate ones. So, don't be afraid. Of course, tweet at me at EVM9000 as well. I'm very responsive, and I love conversations, so I am a open book, as it said. Let's start. Not so rapid fire. Hogwarts Legacy. Got another gameplay showcase. I don't know if you all remember, but Hogwarts Legacy got a gameplay showcase, I want to say two months ago, maybe a little less than that, and it showed off a couple things, some combat, some Hogwarts common rooms, things of this nature. Setting. A little bit of the story. And they did another one. This is showcasing a good bit of things. Uh, I think it showed off some broom stuff. It showed off uh, mounts. It showed off the dark arts. Where you go to the Forbidden Forest. There's a bunch of things. If you want to, go check it out. I watched it. It was very good. Not not very spoilery. It's just detailing what you'll be doing. Uh, the more things that come out of this game, the more I'm excited. Uh, this game looks like it is going to be massive. And I simply can't wait. CD Projekt Red says the PC update that launched with The Witcher 3 very recently will experience a lot of issues. And they're actively working on fixes. I haven't heard what these issues are. I haven't seen many people complaining about them. I saw a handful of people saying, like, you know, they're having visual issues. Nothing killing the game, as far as I understand. I've only done some research today to see. Because, it's, you know, it's recent. I'm recording on the 15th. It's a recent update. So uh, let me know how crazy it is if it's happening to you. I haven't heard anything insane. I saw someone say this is as bad as Cyberpunk. I don't think so. I think that was a bit of an over-exaggeration, but we'll see. Hopefully it's not, and hopefully CD Projekt Red can hurry up with the fixes, as they need the goodwill. Clearly. Rapid Fire was actually rapid today, so I guess it wasn't so not so. Anyways, of course I asked a question, this one to myself. Of course, I'm asking this to everyone at home this time as well. I ask, what have you been playing? Now, this is for you as well. You comment below and we can discuss what we've been playing. I've been playing quite a bit. Finished High on Life recently. Very good game. It, it was a nice change of place. High on Life, of course, launched on Game Pass Day 1 on Xbox. I played it there. It was, very, it was a very fun game. I enjoyed it. It is exactly what it needs to be. A lighthearted adventure. Um, it was funny now with humor, of course, subjective. Um, hard to recommend a game because I don't know everyone's sense of humor. So what I would recommend is watch maybe a favorite streamer or YouTuber. Watch maybe in the opening of the game maybe and see if that in makes you interested in the game and then we'll try it out. Of course, you have Game Pass. You have nothing to lose. So I recommend if you have Game Pass, give it at least 30 to an hour and see if you enjoy it. I very much did. It is exactly what I needed. The combat was actually much better than I thought it would be. The writing, very funny. It's very Justin Rowland, Rick and Morty, of course, because he's behind it. Uh, so if that's the type of humor you enjoy, you're going to enjoy it. It's, it's silly, fun. I, I enjoy it. The combat, a lot, a lot more fun than I thought it would be. I actually thought since we saw that trailer uh, showcasing the first boss fight, I was not very optimistic on, on the combat. But... Actually, playing the game, it's very fun. I like the little doodads that you get. I will say they all talk. You can actually reduce the amount of enemy chatter and gun chatter in-game, which is quite interesting. I didn't do that because I want to hear them talk, but you could do that if you're so inclined. I will say I've, I did kind of stick with 
two to three guns because not all the guns uh are funny i would say especially one particularly she doesn't really say jokes at all she just kind of talks she's a kind of mean sort of not really so that was strange but i very much liked the main gun of course which i assume is the main one you're supposed to have out the majority of the time and uh, i like them all equally uh, sorry, I, I like the main one the most, and the other ones for combat. Actually, the one that isn't funny at all is my favorite in combat, but it just, you know, that, that's all it's fun for is the combat specifically. But I enjoy the game. I, I recommend everyone at least try it. Um, before you spend any money on it, please watch maybe a 30 minutes. If you laugh at it, you'll probably laugh at all the other jokes in the game. Um, the jokes are very fast. So, like, if you don't laugh at one thing, you'll probably laugh in the next 10 seconds at something else. Very good. Uh, something else I've been playing, um, Crisis Core. Just started that fresh on that. Can't really speak too much. It looks exactly like what you thought Crisis Core uh, remake would be. They didn't go crazy on the, um, the design changes or anything like that. It doesn't seem like anything is different other than visuals. Fine by me. I've wanted to replay Crisis Core, and I want to remind myself of the story. And I do want to beat it to see what the ending is. I'm assuming everything stays the same. Maybe there's a small hint. That's something that happens in Final Fantasy VII Remake. I won't spoil here. But I am interested in finishing it. And it is a shorter game. Especially compared to other Final Fantasy stuff. So I shouldn't be too, too long on it. Um, Up next after that, I'm probably going to play a little bit more Vampire Survivors. Something else I've been playing since I've last discussed with you guys. Vampire Survivors is very fun. I see why people like it. I, I don't love it like other people do. But it is fun. It's great. I it, I have to be in the mood for just a game. Maybe put a podcast on, listen in the background, play that. That's that's a great chill. I mean, that's a great backbone game. Now I'm thinking about it. Backbone, remote play, anything like that. Where you like that is a, actually a perfect thing. It's something I'm thinking about right now. It's something I can maybe play on my backbone while my wife does something. Um, what else? I think that's everything I've played. Up as well. Oh, Callisto Protocol. Of course, I finished. Great game. I liked it more than a lot of reviewers. It seems it seems the the general discourse was kind of down on the game. I enjoyed it. I I liked it. I do think the dodge mechanic was a bit messy. It's I like that it tried something different, but it just didn't hit with me. That that was a little annoying. It is hard to to tell. I won't. The pretty much the dodge mechanic is is gripped to a thumbstick. So when you enter combat. If, if you hit left on your left thumbstick, you dodge to your left. So if someone's hitting to your right, you want to go left. Vice versa, if someone hits to your right, you want to go right. Or left, you want to go right. So that's a little hard to set because it's hard to see where they're going to hit you from. I understand the camera angle. They do try to make it seem it, but it's still hard to see. And also, they're very fast, even on a normal difficulty, to tell where they're going. I got a hang of it sometimes. Uh, very early. I would actually say early in the game, it's actually the hardest because you have to be good at the dodging to live so i'll say the game is actually the hardest in the beginning and it gets much easier as you go on but i enjoyed it i liked it it it, it wasn't crazy good i wouldn't say it, it might not even hit my top 10 maybe that speaks to the quality of the game but it was it was a fine game fine game it, it it's clearly trying to be dead space you know but i think that's what we wanted uh it's not as good as dead space i don't even think it's half as good as dead space but dead space is a near perfect game so i did enjoy it also sam whipper was in the game so you know, that's an easy way to make me like it, huh? I think it's all I've been playing. I'm excited for Queued Up because I'm actually much more excited to go back to some games than I am to talk about it. And also Top 10 very soon. Very excited. You know you know our rules here. It's first week of the year, we do our Top 10. So get excited. Very close to Christmas, too. Merry Christmas. Happy um, Hanukkah. I believe that's... I apologize. I'm, I'm a little ignorant on the Jewish holidays. I believe that's about to happen or has already happened forgive me but happy regardless let's go to uh, room around him. according to a known reliable insider i play reliable in quotes viewer anon the name is called viewer anon i say that naughty dog is currently working on the last of us part three now people said that he is very trustworthy i don't know this man woman not binary person i have no idea who this is so i can't speak to the validity of the statement i don't think it's insane to say this <laughs> even as me not being an insider at all and i don't have any friends inside of the inside that would tell me anything or any of that nature i would have probably guessed that this is real so uh 
without him saying anything. I have actually said this on the show before that I'm not surprised if they are working on the part three. And I think they are. He was saying that Neil Druckmann is actually actively heads down uh, ironing out what a part three looks like. And um, I think it's obvious given how part two ends. It ends just like part one does where it kind of demands something happen afterwards, right? And I think part two kind of ends that way too. It kind of demands something else. Although I think part two ends uh, ends more than part one did. Although I hear people actually disagree with that. I think it actually ends more has a more definitive end than part one did, but it's obvious that you don't call something part one, part two and not have a part three in my opinion. So we'll have to see. Let me know what you think about that. I, I think it's, it's real, but we'll see. According to a YouTuber named hard for games. Interesting name. There is going to be a rockstar developed BCW game around the year 2000. Check out Video Games Chronicle for a full walkthrough of that video, or just go watch his YouTube video. I have not had time to watch this. I actually just found this today. I didn't even know this happened. But it's interesting. Uh, go check it out. Rockstar almost made a BCW game. Cool. As reported by Deadline, the film... Oh, I'm sorry. I have a mess up here. I think my Google Docs messed up. Um, This was uh from IGN. So let me grab this story really quick. I apologize for this. Let me go grab this. I think my Google Docs messed up. I was actually going to read an excerpt of an IGN article. Let me see if I can find it. There we go. Uh, this is over by Adam Bankhurst on IGN. I'm gonna, unfortunately, I'm going to have to actually just straight up read the article now. But please go give uh, them a click. Death Stranding a movie in the works from Kojima Productions and Barbarian's Hammerstone Studios. I heard it. Barbarian. Very good. Horror movie, I believe. Um, I don't know anything about it, but I do want to watch it. Hideo Kojima's Kojima Productions has partnered with Barbarian executive Alex Lobovici's Hammer Studios to develop and produce a movie based on Death Stranding. As reported by Deadline, the film is being fully financed by Hammerstone Studios and Kojima and Lobovici will serve as producers on the project. Ko Kojima Productions US and Alan Unger will take on the role of executive producers. That's all we know. Looks like Kojima's finally going to be able to make a movie. Good for him. I'm happy. I wish he stuck with games, if being honest. Not in a rude way. Just, I think he... I think his talents lend much better in this space. Although, he said he's always wanted to make a movie. So, who am I to say what he should do? Happy for it. We'll watch it when it comes out. I have no doubt it will be as strange as all his other things. In a good way. Let's start the actual show for the week. Looks like I had another issue as... Oh, there we go. Sorry. Let me grab my first story here, put that there, and we're ready. All right, first new story. It seems that Apple will be transfer transforming their platforms for upcoming EU requirements to break up the duopoly currently held by Apple and Google over the App Store on their respective devices. This is over on Bloomberg. Now, I'm, I'm pretty ignorant on the mobile space, so I wanted to read a couple tidbits from the actual article. Uh, because, uh, I, like I said, the app store pretty ignorant on it. So I didn't want to do a huge write up as I probably would have made some mistakes. So I do want to read from the blue board article. Go make sure to give them a click. Although it is pay. You get some free trial thing. I, I, I don't pay, pay for blueberry to be honest. Mark, Mark Gurman writes, Apple Inc is preparing to allow alternate app stores on its iPhones and iPads. Part of a sweeping overhaul aimed at complying with strict European union requirements coming in 2024. Software engineering and service employees are engaged in a major push to open up key elements of Apple's platforms. According to people familiar with the efforts as part of the changes, customers could ultimately download third-party software to their iPhones and iPads without using the company's App Store, sidestepping Apple's restrictions and up and the up to 30% commission it imposes on payments. The moves, a reversal of long-held policies, are a response to EU laws aimed at leveling the playing field for third-party developers and improving the digital lives of consumers. For years, regulators and software makers have complained that Apple and Google, which run the two biggest mobile app stores, wield too much power at gatekeepers. If similar laws are passed in additional companies, Apple's projects could lay the groundwork for other regions. According to the people who asked not to be identified because the work is private, but the company's changes are designed initially to just go into just go into effect in Europe, unlike in some policy changes. Apple just does it all together. In this specific one, they want to keep the money flowing in America, so they don't want to change anything here. 
Uh, as an example, they recently had to stick with USB-C as the universal thing for all their new phones. So they're not just going to make a European phone and an Apple or er, an er, American phone. They're just going to make a one phone that has USB-C compatibility. Now they are going to have to comply with this store uh, ruling, but they will not be changing it in America like they did with that port, for instance. Obviously, much more money is involved in the other situation. So they will not change America unless they have to. Which they may, as it seems like regulators are tightening the belts around the duopoly monopoly situations that we are finding ourselves in increasingly uh, around the video game sphere. Um, back to the article. If similar laws are passed in additional countries, Apple's project could lay the ground for other reasons, according to the people, blah, blah. Uh, even so, the news bolstered shares of companies that offer dating services and other apps. Match Group jumped as much as 10%. And Bubble Inc. as much as 8.6%. Blah, blah. Okay, it seems like that's all the... Yes, that's all the, the information that we need to know. Double checking. Yes, this is. Now, I don't have much to add to this. I just want to bring this to attention. It's very interesting if we find ourselves seeing a change up in the mobile space. And as we know, this is how Microsoft exactly wants it to happen. They want to open their own app store on mobile to become a player. They've said this numerous times in the purchase for Activision Blizzard. That's actually one of the reasons why they want Blizzard and Activision to acquire King to have a space in the mobile sphere. They've actually said that they're so behind in the mobile platform that they need something to pretty much uh, put a flag in the ground. And this is the easiest way of doing it, getting king and having uh, the ability to try and get a mobile store going up. And I'm assuming they have they knew about this heading in, and this might be why they're ready to fight to get this to happen, as they want a mobile store up and running, because they're tired of the duopoly that Apple and Google have maintained. I don't blame them. Uh, since we're talking about Activision Blizzard already, why don't we skip ahead? And go straight into Microsoft, according to Bloomberg, sticking with Bloomberg, of course, has offered PlayStation a 10-year deal for Call of Duty to remain on the platform and to give Call of Duty to PlayStation Plus. According to Bloomberg, Sony has not accepted the deal, although the same deal was given to Nintendo, in which they accepted it, as well as, assumably, Steam. This is a response to EU regulators fighting back on the purchase of Activision Blizzard. And this follows the news that the FCC will be going forward with a lawsuit to potentially block the purchase outright. Now, all of this given an important context with the Activision Blizzard thing. I'm as tired of talking about it as you are hearing about it, but I thought it was interesting to at least bring this up. Microsoft is trying to at least seem like they are going to be open with giving games out. Like with this situation here. Hey, look, we are going to sign an agreement with Nintendo. I assume they have one going with Steam, although I, I couldn't find direct reporting stating that Steam has signed a deal. Steam, let's let's look it up real quick. Steam signed. Oh, whoops. Steam signed Call of Duty for 10. Let's let's see what comes up. Um signs they doing for Nintendo. Sony signed it to Yeah, it doesn't seem like uh Yeah, they're already returning, so it seems like it's not a huge deal that they've said that, but it doesn't seem like a much big deal. Uh, for at least Steam, they don't seem to care too much as they were already coming back. But as stated, I think... Hmm. We've had a big deal with the FTC potentially coming in to try and block this purchase. And I think it's quite interesting that a lot of people are trying to state that this isn't a huge deal. I want to yeah, at least be a counter to that thing. This is a pretty big deal. If this actually goes to court, which it will, it's pretty worrisome as FTC needs to make a case to make a monopoly. And they have some pretty good cases, I imagine. And also, it seems that there's a bunch of things that makes them worried that them buying Call of Duty will actually make a monopolistic environment, which is, I assume, worrying. I am on the notion that I just want this done so we can be stop talking about this, but clearly this will now not... It, this might not even be the next year now. 
since this lawsuit is happening. So we're going to be talking this for a long time. Uh, it would be insanity if this goes in by June of next year. No, it's not going to happen. So we will probably be right here. I'll probably be right here at this is talking about this very news story, potentially this time next year, which my God, but a lot of interesting things have come out from the story. At least I do still want to do a huge write up of everything we may have learned and have a dedicated video just for that one day. Um, maybe I'll, maybe that'll be my Christmas project. I don't know, but I wanted to bring this up as it's interesting and clearly PlayStation is looking for a bigger deal than just 10. They want to try and block this outright and they know that deal will be there when they come back. I think I th I'm pretty sure it will be regardless of what happens here. E either they win and it blocks the deal and they keep PlayStation regardless or they lose and they still get the 10 year deal regardless. So like it's like a win win for them, really, which I'll be curious to see, like if PlayStation it like the head of playstations and their lawyers and like who's running all this be curious to see what what is the optimistic ruling this may have like are there are they there specifically saying yeah we think we can stop this or are they there it's like hey we can make this as annoying as possible and maybe in a couple years they might call it back open and and close it out i don't know but clearly this is important to playstation as they've spent Hundreds of millions, eh, hundreds of millions, maybe not. They've spent a lot of tens of millions of dollars in lawyers to make sure this uh, at least gets stuck for a while. We'll have to see. I don't have too, too much else to that. Speaking of PlayStation, more details coming from the God of War TV show stating that it has officially been ordered by Amazon Prime Video. Or reported by VGC, the adaptation will have showrunner Raph Judkins and writers Mark Fergus and Hawk Otsby. All three of them will also executive produce the series along with Santa Monica head Yumi Yang and creative director Corey Barlog. That's very nice to hear. I'm very excited about that. I'm glad that they're going the Naughty Dog slash HBO route. That we, hey, let's get let's get Neil Druckmann in here. Let's have him intimately involved in all this. Let's try and tell a, a broader story. And seems like they're doing that as well here. Let's bring them in. Let's have them help us tell the story or at least color in some of this coloring plates that we have with that we call the god of war tv show uh, i'm optimistic it seems like playstation is all in in what is it called cross media synergy or whatever the gar you know garbage corporate term you want to use so hey cool good for them they got the hbo last of us show coming out that's gonna boast their sales easily easily like as soon as that rares everyone's gonna be like ah oh, i should check the game out so it's going to have the Witcher effect. Now, I wanted this segment just to talk about the Game Awards. I was going to put it in one you've been playing, but it's already kind of long. And it's also kind of a new story, so I want to discuss some of the Game Awards, at least. Or at least some of the things that I'm very excited about. I know I've been a bit late. I apologize. Things in my personal life has come up, but I want to at least bring up a lot of what happened at the Game Awards and some of the things I liked. Uh, we're going to talk uh, mostly about games. I'll go to the awards near the end, but I want to talk about a little bit about the actual games that were there first, and then we can get into the awards. I, I, I don't I don't think... The awards, are, I think, they are the least interesting, as I don't think anyone was quite surprised at what happened. Right. So, a couple games I wanted to pull out here. Dead Cells Return to Castlevania looks very fun. This looks like a uh, crossover between Dead Cells and Castlevania. Shocking, I know, given the title, but... What I mean by that is it, I'm curious on how deep the crossover goes. It looks like we're going and fighting Dracula in um, uh, ca uh, Castle Dracula. So are we having some sort of story in this Dead Cells games? I didn't play Dead Cells, so I can't speak to the formats. I know it's a roguelike game, so we'll have to see. But I'm, ex I'm interested in the game. We didn't get too, too much about it given the trailer. So I am going to be waiting. Uh, Valiant Hearts uh, Going Home, I believe is what it's called, was also announced. This is going to be a part of of um, Netflix, I believe. So it's going to be on the Netflix thing. Yeah, it should be. Yeah, Coming Home. And then it's going to be coming to Netflix games. So have fun. I, I enjoyed Valiant Hearts. Loved the game. Uh, you should check it out if you haven't. It was originally a... Uh, I think they were called UbiArt. 
it was like Ubisoft indie games pretty much that they were touting for a while. They stopped doing that. I it's sad, but they did. Um Child of Light, another good one that came from that. Hellboy Web of uh Word. Very cool looking game. Very cool looking game. Very comically accurate art style and it's all actively fighting. Very fun looking. Very, very fun. Uh let's see. A viewfinder was another good one. If you don't if you remember this, viewfinder was a it's it's like super limable like you you grab a painting and if you put it in the foreground and drop it it stays there and it and it's now part of the environment you can walk through it so for instance if you if you have a picture of a bathtub you pick it up and in as soon as you walk towards it the bathtub's not there very cool mind-boggling things like that i do recommend looking at the trailer because it looks very cool uh, and i'm very excited for it as you can tell uh, let's see what else do I want to talk about if I remember right what was replaced replaced I think oh yeah replaced is um the very cool 2d game uh that was showed off a long time ago I believe at an Xbox showcase um uh, this is uh, the official steam description replaced is a 2.5d sci-fi retro futuristic action platformer where you play as reach uh, which is an anagram an artificial intelligence trapped in a human body against its own will. Whoa. Replace combines cinematic platforming, pixel art, and free flow action combat set in alternate 1980s. Very, very excited about that. Cannot wait for this game. Um, I'm hoping I'm not getting two games mixed up with Replaced and what was shown on Xbox. Or, or, correct me if I'm wrong, Achievers listening at home. Maybe that was called something else. I'll have to look that up later. Um, we're playing Street Fighter 6. I'm, I'm getting more and more excited about this. I actually am not really a Street Fighter guy. More of a Mortal Kombat man myself. Um, but this one looks very fun. I'm not, I can't really tell you why. I think it might be because I haven't had a fighting game in a while. My, my last fighting game that I got really into was the last Mortal Kombat, which it feels like it's been a long, I think it's only been like two years, but, uh, maybe three, probably three years who knows but it has actually been a while probably longer than that actually i think i played it two years ago but it actually came out like three four years ago not important anyway it's been a while so i'm i i, I think i have the itch for a fighting game and i think that's why this looks so appealing to me is that it announced a release date for january 2nd or sorry january geez june 2nd and you get to do the closed beta things if you sign up i actually did sign up i'm hoping to get one i don't think i will but fingers crossed now, if you know anything about me, you know I loved Hades. So Hades 2 got a big pop out of me. Very big pop. I'm very excited. And Supergiant usually does not do sequels. So this was actually a big surprise to not only me, but I think to just about everyone. I don't think anyone really thought it was going to be Hades. Uh, but I did. As soon as I heard the that string, and I was like, oh, this is Hades. Like, the moment. It's the moment it happened and it's got me so excited i actually went back to hades i never did the epilogue so i'm actually playing hades one right now to see if i can get that epilogue done so i'm more ready for hades two than i was previously and i'm excited i want to play it now but unfortunately i'm gonna have to wait for early access sometime next year as hades one was also developed in early access as well i might actually play early access i don't know i i don't i, I want to play a finished product so i i don't think i want to mess with the the you know the previews and these things and also i want it on xbox i don't want to play it on steam excuse me but we'll see and also i think that was actually an, an epic game store launch title so not steam judas curious if anyone at home could spot immediately but clearly bioshock um influence and the reason it is of course is it is ken levine behind the game ken levine of course behind the original bioshock and bioshock infinite titles uh two incredible titles i recommend everyone go play if you have not played the first bioshock there is no game out right now that matches the quality of that game that came out 12 years ago now something like that maybe a little more than like 13 years so please, please go check it out. Judas looks incredible. It looks like a Ken Levine Bioshock game is coming out. And I can't wait. I cannot wait. We have not gotten a Ken Levine game since Infinite. Infinite came out in the 360 era. 
Um, let's see, Bioshock Infinite. When did that come out? Because this is how long we've we've not seen him. Um, 2013. It's gonna be so if it launches next year, this will be his first game in 10 years, I believe. Uh, this is of course his new studio, uh, Ghost Story Games. What more can I add? The the beautiful imagery, the the black and green aesthetic that was showing Judas's name, the fix what you broke tagline. It had a big smile on my face. The horse mask guy person now robot. The assumably plasmids. I don't think they have names. I don't I don't think they had names. Um Uh, oh, the imagery where eat the cookie, where it's two people eating a cookie and it has a heart shape. I mean, just says Bioshock. Uh, let's read the, the Steam description. A disintegrating starship, a desperate escape plan. You are the mysterious and troubled Judas. Your only hope for survival is to make or break alliances with your worst enemies. Will you work together to fix what you broke or will you leave it to burn? <laughs> oh, my God. This looks so cool. Are you kidding me? The characters look really cool. That meteor coming at her while she sits there and she's like, like straightens out and like gets ready for it. God, like, come on. Like this gets me so excited. And it looks like the plasmids in these games. I can't tell um, if it's like a machine or if it's like a, or if it's something that it looks like a machine that you get implanted and you put something in it and it like lights, lights up whatever it is. So it, we saw the electricity and the fire. The characters look really cool. It looks like there's like a robot that's like ripped up and you can see like underneath her, her skin to see the robot. This is going to be awesome. I can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah, you can tell I'm giddy. I'll, I'll say that. Um, So everyone, please uh, go check out Bioshock so you can be excited for Judas. I don't think it had a projected release day. I think it's just at some point. It will be coming up. Um, this will be a quick one. Destiny 2 Lightfall. If you like Destiny 2, I'm sure you'll like Lightfall. If you don't like Destiny 2, you don't care. Uh, I do, so I'm excited. Tr uh, Destiny right now, a bit bland, if I have to say so myself. More bland than I feel like in the past. I'm actually like not super thrilled where we are in Destiny right now. Both um, narratively and... And, I don't know. The gameplay is always good, so I can't really say that. But there's just nothing exciting happening right now. Nothing is exciting. I, I think that's a better way. Like, nothing, I'm not excited to play the game. It feels more like um, it feels like the, the the like the the last slice of pizza. Like you you've had the the other slices, so so you know what to expect, and it's still going to be good. But you're not excited to eat it. It's like that. It's, I'm not excited anymore. I want something to like get me excited again. So hopefully that in, happens in Lightfall. Uh, the the stuff looks cool. The guns look cool. So we'll just have to see if the game lives up. So it's us. God kill the Justice League is up next with a quick trailer. Um, it actually ended with a uh, showcase of Batman, and it uh, ended with a very very tear jerking. Uh, thank you, Kevin Conroy, as this seems to be his actual last performance as. Batman, um, this got me a little choked up as Kevin Conroy is Batman to me. He, he, I grew up with him, um, with the animated series and the Arkham games. That was, I mean, that was my childhood. That was my first introduction to DC that and the Superman animated series. Like that was that, that's where I grew up loving comics. That's when I started reading and that's when I got really into comics and enjoying them. And yeah, this, this got me choked up. Uh, um, rest in peace, my friend. Uh, we'll, we'll see you soon. We all will, wherever you went. The PC port for Last of Us Part 1, March 3rd, I think. Returnal um, is also getting a PC port. I Did we get um, a date for that one? Returnal PC port. Let's see. Uh, I wrote down March 3rd, and I know that's not correct, so I want to see. I don't think we got a date. Did we? Okay, this told me the specs. I don't need the specs. I need the release date. I apologize, Shivers. I should have had this written down. Early next year. Last of Us is going to be March 3rd, and then this at some point next year. Um, very demanding specs, by the way. So if you're interested in the game, go check out the specs. As I think it requires 32 gigs of RAM. <laughs> so um, you brace yourself. I will say that. Uh, I think mine has 16, so I'm nowhere close. Uh Let's see. Uh, Star Wars Jedi Survivor. I'm sure everyone's heard of this. This is going to be March 17th. 
I mean, smile on my face as soon as this came up. I can't wait. I cannot wait. That lightsaber looks sick. Looks like you're going to be doing different types of lightsaber. We saw like the Kylo Ren broadsword lightsaber that that Kylo Ren had in the um, I think it's called New Trilogy or whatever. What you know the the the, re- the recent trilogy. Um, looks cool. I I can't wait to 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 play the game. It looks sick. Dual lightsabers. The original one was good with some caveats. I'm hoping this irons it out and, and turns out to be a really good sequel. It looks like it will. Looks like some inspiration with Horizon. May, um. And it's kind of open world formatting, maybe. Who knows? But I'll see. I loved the scene with um I don't know any of the people's names. They they I don't think they have names yet, but uh uh Cal Kestis was I guess I think in front of like a bar somewhere. And the this giant alien looks and he's like, Show our friend where the Jedi are gone. And he slowly walks away while the kind of bounty hunter guy like revs up his lightning spear thing, and I was like, God, that is I was like, that is fucking cool. Like, I don't know why, but that line delivery was ah, like perfect. Like, that was so cool. Him slowly walking away, like he doesn't give a shit. Like, I don't know. It it, it made it, it made me smile, and I can't wait for the game. I love the first one. Can't wait to love the second one. Um, the makers of Celeste is making something called Earthblade. Uh, it's coming out twenty twenty four. It looks cool. Go check it out. It's it, we have a while, so I. I I'm, I'm like okay i'll see it when it's more done if if you're announcing it now i'll i'll believe it when i see it if it comes out in two years uh hard for a lot of people to call it like that uh but we'll see i'm very excited celeste was an incredible experience i'm not a platforming guy and i loved that game um, it also looks very different than what you would assume we, we would see out of a celeste maker right um earthblade yeah it looks i mean it looks awesome are you kidding me yeah, 2024, extremely okay games is the studio. Let's see, Bubba. Oh, Death Stranding 2. How, how could I forget? Um, Crazy trailer. Looks insane. Can't quite understand what's going on. Uh, just like Death Stranding. Um, that's all I have to add. It, it, I don't think we're going to see this game for another probably year, year and a half. So, that that's all I have to add. Excited. Maybe we'll get the we'll get for this before the movie, clearly. Tekken eight. More Tekken. If you love Tekken, go ahead. Not never been a Tekken guy, so I I can't really I can't speak to this at all. Um Immortals of what was this game? I feel like I remembered liking this. Let me double check what this is. Mortals of Avenom. Avenom. Let's see. Um, this was the single player magic game. I don't remember this. I'm going to quickly play I'm gonna mute it. Oh, that's right. There wasn't much shown about this. It's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Looks cool, but it's, it's one of these CG trailers. I, that's why I didn't remember it. Cause it doesn't show you anything. It's, it's like a immortals of it shows things and it's very, um, avowed. Looking with the magic, like opening his hands, doing the go- with a gauntlet thing. I'm like, all right, cool. Hard to get excited for a CG trailer. It looks cool, but we'll see what the game looks like. Borders Great Three coming out August. Nice, looks awesome. Don't know if I play it as it looks a little hardcore for me, but we'll see. Fire Emblem Engage expansion pass was announced. It was what you expect from an expansion pass. I I more just want to talk about the game. It looks exciting. I actually a new trailer came out today. Um, it looks like they're heavily going into like a let's like have like a little home here and have like friends and hang out and things. Um, very persona. So we'll see. Diablo four with a sick trailer. June sixth at the day. Oh my god, this trailer. Are you kidding me? Trailer looked awesome. Like the the lady burning her feet on the coal like chanting and then like doing the bow and the spears hit all the demons and whoever that guy is flying going to fight i think her name is judith or something like the evil demon lady i mean it's sick you kidding me horizon burning shores april 19th cool uh i called it like i see it i said early next year i was doubted and i was proven right just like um frozen Frozen Lands, I believe it was called. We're getting Burning Shores, April nineteenth. I mean, I, I, uh, I mean, <laughs> all nothing but net with that prediction.
Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I think that's everything for everything. I was like, oh, this is awesome. Me or Maker look kind of cool. That it was like a looks like a you build like a labyrinth thing while another person like runs through it. Cool. Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty looks sick. Expansion for Cyberpunk. Uh, this was a big reveal. Armored Core Six: Fires of the Rubicon. Uh, from from Soft's next game. Never played Armor Core. Can't say anything about it, but it seems like people are excited. I'm excited for them. I'll play it. It's from Soft, so I'm gonna give it a shot. It is not a Soulsborne game. They've already said that. Uh, it it will be an Armored Core game, where whatever that means to whoever that that means anything to. It will not be a Dark Souls, Demon Souls, no, nothing. It is going to be an Armor Core game. So get ready for something different from from Soft that we haven't had in a while. And another look at Final Fantasy 16, June 22nd. I'm ready for the game. Uh, I'm hoping this is the last time we get to see it, as I feel like we've seen and heard a lot of the game, and it's never anything different looking. It's always very dark, and there's always summons, and there's always talking, and, the, and, and I'm like, okay, all right. I've seen enough. Go away. Let's 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 like wait like three months before the game comes out and then you can come back and like show everything. I don't know. I, I feel like we've seen this too much already and we probably haven't seen it a bunch, but I feel like I have. I feel like I've seen this like three or four times already and we still have a half of a year to go to see this game. So I'm like, all right, let's let's relax now. Let's get to like May, March, and then you can start pimping the game again. And that's where it ended on. I, 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 I think this is easily the best game awards they've ever done by a thousand percent thousand percent way better than anything they've ever done um last year i was bored to tears in most parts the year before that i thought it was fine this year was almost of a perfect show i i will say again i want awards given out we're not doing many awards so please like give out awards some more I want some more awards. I want to hear people have their speeches and have some fun. I want us to celebrate these people and their accomplishments. I don't want someone to just go, you won, like, and off screen and blah, blah, blah. I understand a lot of things we don't care about, but, like, best action game, best fighting games, these things should be celebrated for a little bit, not just, like, and this person won, and this person won. So, like, come on. Um, Yeah, that's it. I, I love Jeff Keighley. He's, he's a nice guy. He's fun. I like him. I like his spunk. He's always very happy. Seems like every time he's on a stage, the dude can't stop smiling. So I like him. Um, it did seem like the opening to the show uh, was unexpected as Christopher Judge won Best Performance and he sat up and made sure everyone knew he won. He sat there for, I want to say, 10 minutes and I'm sure Jeff Keighley was punching a wall in the back. I don't know why they didn't play the music sooner. Maybe they were trying to make a moment here or something. I'm not very sure. Um... But uh, he did it. He wouldn't shut up. Um, happy for him. Love him. Uh, it was very indulgent, I would say. But I don't know. I would probably be crying if I wanted something like this. So I don't blame the guy, I guess. I think that's everything for the Game Wars. Let me know, of course, what you thought and anything about what I said in the comments. Um, like I said, the awards, nothing surprising. Elton Ring won Game of the Year. Oh, shocking. It was either that or God of War. Um, to me, it's no different from one winning and the other one winning because they're both incredible games. So it's like this 10 or this 10, which 10, which, which 10 is tenor? Like, uh, they're both great. So I can't find myself being many upset about it. Either one winning. Moving on. Read on the PlayStation box. Spider-Man 2 were released for PS5 in the fall of 2023. Exciting. Very Exciting unexpected announcement i think it was leaked by someone or something and it just they just came out of nowhere and we're like oh they're coming out there was a listing on the actual playstation tour after a while um so i don't know why they they said anything but cool that's cool um i'm assuming we're gonna slowly begin the ramp up sometime uh next year to this game similar to god of war every now and then you'll see a quick trailer from it showing some stuff of the game um let's hear from the creative director brian Intel over at insomniac quote what a year it's been for playstation studios here at insomniac games uh we've been in absolute awe of the work of our peers congrats to everyone on a successful 2022 
And here's to the next year being just as exciting as we seem to get Marvel's Spider-Man 2 ready for release next fall. Now, Insomniac, are they known for delaying things? I don't think they had to delay Spider-Man. So, no, uh, no, they usually... Sorry, I need some water. They usually nail dates. So, if they say fall of next year, I mean, they have until late November. So... Now, I'm assuming they want a lot of the free press of Game Awards, so they probably want to be out around the time God of War, or at least before God of War, up to God of War. So, I'm assuming they don't want to wait too, too much, because that's a lot of free advertisement for your game. You get all the nominations and these things, so I'm assuming part of the plan is make it in for free press time. So, we'll see. Nothing much else to discuss that. They literally said, hey, next fall. Cool. Not really sure why they announced it. I think they were forced to because I think one of the writers slipped up or something. Who knows? Moving on. Amazon is set to publish a new Tomb Raider title with Crystal Dynamics. The same title we've heard about from Crystal back in April of this year, which will be a soft reboot of the franchise and will be a current gen title. This is the second title being published by Amazon as Blue Protocol will also be published by them. Blue Protocol was actually announced, I want to say, um... And the Game Awards, I want to say it was announced there. I don't believe we knew about it prior to then. Or did we? I might be misremembering something. Is Blue Protocol the game that... No, it's not. It's not. Okay. So, we see, so yeah, I, I think this was um, announced, but like th this was the big blowout. It's free-to-play multiplayer online action RPG. Cool. Looks very uh, Genshin Impact. So, that tells you what kind of game it is. I'm excited. Uh, Amazon's beginning the push into the games industry. Uh, no surprise, Microsoft wants to nail down someone as big as Activision Blizzard as they want to set in their flag and make sure they are not pushed out of this. As Amazon has big money. So they might be starting to buy more studios here soon. Get ready. They've already tried to make a couple games. They might just start buying people because they are flush with cash not not just money they have cash they have hard cash similar to how apple does they just have straight up cash that they can just float around and buy people with so if if they are planning on doing something they need to do it now as interest rates and the fed uh rise everything up they need to do it now before the money becomes worse so they're going to do it now on either on loan or full cash they're going to be doing it soon uh next year Although I don't think we'll see quite as many as we did in the last two years. I think, I mean, we're still going to see active acquisitions. People want to start, if they're doing out loans for a lot of these persons, which is generally what you do. Uh, you want to start doing them now before it gets even worse, as most likely Fed interest hikes and all these things are going to just keep getting worse. So get ready. Date updates. Let's start closing the show. Fuser is getting delisted December 19th. So as of listening, you only have about three days to enjoy more Fuser. Atlas announced both Persona 3 Portable and Persona 4 Golden. It's going to be launching January 19th. It's going to be costing $19.99 USD, and you can buy a bundled price for $39.49 USD. 50 cents off. Ooh, crazy deals, huh? Uh, Yeast X Nordics coming to PS5 and PS4 in 2023, and that's going to be the date updates that I have for you for this show. Very excited for Persona 3 and 4 coming January 19th. That's going to be coming to Xbox via Game Pass. Cannot wait to play Persona 4 Golden and Persona 3 for the first time. I played 4 Golden on the Vita way back when, and this will be my time playing it on Xbox, getting achievements. Very exciting. Can't wait. Let's move on to what's queued up for the weekend. Of course, this could be a game, a video game, a painting, a graphic novel, a comic book, a book, podcast. I mean, really anything. What do you have queued up? This is, of course, not only a question for I, but a question for you at home. What are you going to queue up for the week? Is there something that you want to do? Let me know in the comments. Tweet at me. What would be a preferred method of communication? Patreon DM. Of course, patreon.com slash achievers. To support the show, keep me going. As I want to do this full time one day. Now, what do I have queued up? I want to play more Crisis Core. I'm going to be finishing that. Maybe I'll get that finished before the 
next recording session of next week as we lead into Christmas time. What else? So generally I do a chill game for moving in from Christmas to New Year's. And these are kind of like my safety games, I'll call them. Things that I just like replaying uh, to kind of revisit, almost like an old friend. Uh, Mass Effect is generally that game. That's actually going to be something I might be touching on. Um, but I'm going, I have three games I have set for these and I'm going to either decide if it's going to be one, two or all three of them playing through. Unlikely it's all three. We'll have to see, but Mass Effect Legendary Edition came on PS plus for the month of December. Guarantee grab, by the way, make sure you go grab that. That's live right now. Take a time. I say it's worth the PlayStation plus subscription for three months easily to just be able to play that for three months. Um, if you don't just want to buy it outright, uh, Great game. I mean, great. You're getting three games for the price of one. I mean, it's insane. Mass Effect is one of the best trilogies ever made, if not the best, and some of my favorite games ever. So, go try out Mass Effect, please. I beg you. Great game. So, I'm going to be playing that, actually, on my PS5 to get some trophies. And then I need to finish out my 1,000 on Xbox as well. So, I'm going to be doing both of those things. If not, just one. And then I want to play the Witcher 3 update. I've always wanted to rebeat the game because I want to romance Yennefer and do a couple different story things. So those are the two things I'll be doing. And then for the third game, I want to play Persona 5 Royal. I need to thousand the game as I've planned a bit on my PlayStation. I need to now thousand it on my Xbox. Uh, as I love getting all of the achievements or trophies and games that I love pretty much. That You know, that's just kind of my thing. So that's those are my three things that I'm going to be touching on leading into the holiday breaks. And I'm excited. I don't know why. I haven't been excited for this in a long time to revisit some of the older games, but here I am. Very excited. Three of my favorite games of all time sit before me, and I couldn't be more excited to replay them. Thank you so much for listening to the show. Um, it's always shorter when it's just me, of course. Actually, I'm about to hit an hour. This is going to be my longest solo ever. Um, the Game Awards breakdown helped to that quite a bit, but uh, thank you. For listening thank you for watching thank you for subscribing liking five star reviews any any of the things that you do for this show this humble show of just me i appreciate so much thank you so much I, i'm going to be working by the way if you're watching on youtube audio i know you don't care but youtube if you see me and i'm just one lonely box with a empty second box i'll try and work on a fix for that soon to make um, an overlay with just me so it doesn't look as awkward without someone else here. Uh, we'll have to see, though. Uh, again, thank you so much for watching and listening. Remember, tweet, comment, anything you, you want about the show. If you have a question, if you have something you'd like to change, you want something to change up the show, always open to suggestions. Love everyone, though, at home. Enjoy your holidays. If it's the last time I'll be uh, you'll be hearing from uh, me, like if you won't be listening to next week's episode, then... Remember to enjoy uh, time with either your family members, your friends, anything in between, or all of the above. Have fun. And remember, stay safe and go Chief.